Hi, it's Kelly here. In this video, I want to share with you something else, additional, that Electroculture 2.0 does that Electroculture 1.0 doesn't really do. Or, to, or maybe this much. And in order to explain it to you, I'm going to put up a chart so that you can follow along and see what I'm talking about. Um, and in this chart, it's from the Centers for Disease Control, CDC, and it charts the incidence of upper respiratory infections, so including people having the flu or what's called RSV, which I believe is respiratory syncytial virus, common cold, whatever. The, the CDC collects this data and, and they print this chart up every week to show you where we stand. And I, it's the first time basically I've done this, so bear with me as far as the chart being there, but you can freeze the screen and look at it and, and blow up the screen full size so that you can see what you know exactly what I'm talking about. And, y and you'll notice on this chart the red triangles. And you'll see the red triangles going sharply up this past flu season till it hits the 47th week. And then it comes sharply down. That coincides, November 20th, I made a video, put it up on YouTube, asking people, and it's, I believe the title is, do you use Organite or Tensor Rings? So you can look, if you subscribe or, or go to my channel, you can probably find it there November 20th, which coincides basically with the 47th week. And I was uh, asking people who have that already to start rotating it, spinning it, because those things have the same properties as the electroculture. With the copper and what have you, they do offer protective uh, frequencies that go out. So, as you can see, it dropped down. Now, it didn't take a lot of people seeing it because it was a high participation rate. And the people who did see it, they loved the idea and they wanted to do it. And it, it, it really, it only takes five or five or ten people really to make this happen. And I'll give you another example. Uh, back in 2020, you remember when the flu supposedly disappeared? And everybody thought it was because they were counting that other thing. You know, the one that starts with the letter C. Yeah, well, the CDC actually does and continue to collect the data from around the country in Puerto Rico, the incidence of upper respiratory infections, different kinds of flu, what have you, and charted it. It's just that, that the percentage of people who are positive dropped from, say, 15 to 20 percent during the height of the season down to one-tenth of one percent. So what coincided with that drop? Well, when I was, back at the time when I was selling these heartfelt energizers, a lady bought 10 of the 8-inch discs and two of the 12-inch discs, which are like triple the power of the 10-inch discs, or excuse me, the 8-inch discs. And so when she did that, the flu disappeared. And it continued to disappear around the world until her landlord, she was a, uh, she's a live-in nurse, she's like 86 years old, and the landlord was concerned about the electric bill. But although each unit only adds $2 a month to your electric bill, however, you withstand and tolerate cold and heat much, much better, so you actually use the less air conditioning and less heating. So it really doesn't cost anything, but this is what he wanted. So she packed them up, and then the flu started to come back gradually. And then this past year, past season, after people had been getting a lot of the uh, things in their arm, uh, the flu returned with, like gangbusters, and so did the RSV. In fact, the CDC and others were talking about a triple epidemic, or a triple-demic, they called it. That's when I put the call out on November 20th, asking people to do something, because between those two factors and the, and the other thing that starts with a C, the letter C, it would have been a disaster, because it would have meant more people getting more flu shots on top of the other shots that they were getting, and this could have been, you know, you just reach a saturation, what they call it, the straw that breaks the camel's back. So we could have had a, a, a huge explosion in all kinds of illnesses. 
So people came to the fore, didn't take that many, and it, but you can see it started dropping down. And then when you look at the chart, when it gets to the baseline, what the CDC calls their baseline for the flu uh, epidemic or whatever you call it, there's six straight weeks, at least it was originally six straight weeks, right there, the same, identical every week. That's because they, I believe that they were pushing, they wanted people to get the shots still. And if it had dropped down the way it really did, I believe the way it really did drop down, they wouldn't have been able to make that case. So they had to pretend that this line consisted because the numbers of things like RSV were, were down. The actual numbers of the flu cases were going down, down, down. So it would have taken a drop, a huge drop in all that, but all of a sudden people getting a cold show up to change, to make this chart balance out. Well, in fact, not only did RSV go down and the flu go down, but another viral infection, which is supposedly the most contagious infection of all, according to the CDC, which is the measles, uh, we have had only 18 cases for the entire six month, first six months of this year. And that's during the heaviest flu, uh, measles season, 18 cases. And it's supposedly 12 to eight, an RO of 12 to 18, which means that each person that gets it can give it to 12 to 18 people. <laughs> well, it didn't happen. I did it because if it, if those 12 or eight, if those 18 did, we'd now have you know would have gone. There'd be lots of uh, outbreaks. There were no outbreaks. Now you compare that to a year ago. Uh, not a year ago, but prior to. Um, when we had the, the lockdowns and all of that, there were 4,000 cases of, of measles a year, average, for, for the previous five years. And then when the lockdowns and all that stuff happened, the vaccine rates uh, slowed down a bit. So fewer vaccines were made. The measles must be reported by law. So if a doctor has a measles case, he has to report it. So it's a pretty accurate number that they get. And we've only had 18 cases for the first six months of this year. Um, and worldwide, uh, prior to you know 2020, the the CDC, or excuse me, the World Health Organization was warning that we were going to, that the measles were getting worse and worse and worse. In fact, there were 207,000 people who died. I believe it was in 2018, around there of the measles around the world. And they were cautioning about it, CDC was cautioning about it. It was big news. Now, if you go to the World Health Organization and try to find the numbers, it's really tough, if they have them at all, because it disappeared, and they're all about pushing the fear. And they didn't have any measles to push. They couldn't talk, they didn't have a good story to tell. So they don't talk about it. Or if they talk about it in generality, saying, oh, we got, you know, it could happen. Da, da, da. Yeah, look out, the boogeyman is out there around the corner, around the corner, around the corner. But right now, the boogeyman's gone. The boogeyman is gone. Yeah. So, as this chart shows, and all the other stuff, it shows that by spinning and rotating, things change. It's when things are being spun that there's improvement. And when there's a reduction in it, it comes back. And so, uh, you know, and there's a lot of organite out there and a lot of tensor rings out there prior to the spinning action taking. And it may have held down those numbers to some degree, to some degree. But to create the dramatic shift downward required the spinning. So make sure you get involved in electroculture 2.0 as soon as you can. By the, by the way, there's more information in my book, there uh, is there a question that heals instantly? And there's what I call bonus material about this topic. I don't use the word electroculture in it, but it talks about this topic in about four different chapters. And by the way, there was a review today on Amazon where the person said that the question that's in the book enables you to overcome, you know, the kinds of emotional stuff we run through in a in seconds, and he said it was worth it. He or she said it was worth every penny. 
So I hope you get yourself a copy of that, of my book, um, and we can change this world. The, what the question deals with, you know, uh, electroculture and all these things, the, the heartfelt energizers, it deals with the 10% level, which would be the physical level of the body, right? And the question really deals with beyond that, a higher level. And so it, we want, obviously, to have perfect health and perfect, you know, moods and things like that. We also want to have a higher level working with us because those things are always possible. That we can have challenges, you know, whether it be relational or, or whatever. So uh, that's so the book has two, two parts to it, really. It has about the question, then it has information about the heartfelt energizer type of energy. Oh, by the way, thank you so much for your assisting me uh, with my challenges, you know, with my broken back and the gifts that you all have, have given me. I mean, I, I can't say enough to you for that. Thank you so much. It has really helped me. Uh, it costs me about 40 bucks a month now with copays with a chiropractor to keep the, keep the circulation going uh, to my le lower leg and uh, I also take I take like 15 20,000 vitamin C a, a lipidic type of vitamin C in order that seems to work really well I notice that as soon as I take it within five ten minutes my legs don't feel so heavy and so it's helping me uh, quite a bit as well and I have other things I've been doing um, so thank you so much thank you thank you thank you you take care Let's do this electric culture. Let's do it all. We're going to have gardens of Eden everywhere. We may have one, just one great big garden of Eden. We may have one big garden of electric culture. <laughs> Thank you. God bless.